Hello Geometry, it's Mr. Anderson here um, again with a, uh, a new section in Geometry. We're in section 5.3 today and we're going to be talking about inequalities in one triangle. All right, so let's get started. First of all, objectives for today. We're going to recognize and apply properties of inequalities to the measures of the angles of a triangle. And we're going to recognize and apply properties of inequalities to the relationships between the angles and the sides of a triangle. Okay, so let's let's get going. All right, first of all, the definition of inequality. All right, so if you look at the first part here, um, it says for any real numbers a and b, a is greater than b if and only if there's a positive number c such that a equals b plus c. Whew. Wow, okay. Here's basically what that means. Just look down here where it gives an example. Here's what it means is, if you know that five equals two plus three, well then you know that five has to be greater than two and five has to be greater than three. So that's all it's saying is, if you have two things added together to equal some other number, that means that other number has to be greater than both of those. Okay, so we're gonna use that in the triangles today that we look at, okay? All right, so, Remember this? See, look at, oh, look at this over here. See angle one over here? Look at where that is. We've been talking about this in the triangle. This angle one is outside of the triangle. It's an exterior angle, okay? So uh, remember when you just continue one side, then the angle that's formed by that is an exterior angle. And if you remember what we did before, let me go down here, is we, we when we talked about the, uh-oh, I'm going to try to do this without uh, getting into that stuff there. Um, before we talked about the measure of angle one, the exterior angle, we said that it was equal to the two remote interior angles. So in this case, the measure of angle one, according to that, what we learned before, is equal to measure of angle B plus the measure of angle A. Okay, that's what we learned before with about the exterior angle, right? So the exterior angle is equal to the, the two angles that are the furthest away from angle one. Well, remember what we just talked about in the last slide? If you have something, in this case, sorry, uh, angle one equal to these other two, then we know that the measure of angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle B. And we know that the measure of angle one has to be greater than the measure of angle A. So we're combining a couple of things that we've learned here. We learned about the exterior angle equaling the two remote interior angles. And now we're saying, hey, if those two add together to give me one, then angle one has to be greater than both of those. Okay, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Doesn't it? All right, next. All right, so here's where we're, this is leading to, and this might get a little tricky, and I'm going to try to kind of draw this out as best as I can here. Um, all right, so it says, uh, using the exterior angle inequality theorem, we're going to list all the angles whose measure are less than measure of angle four. Okay, well, let's find measure of angle four. Here's angle four right here. And so remember, in what we're talking about is with an exterior angle. So what I have to do is kind of look through this and figure out, okay, if this is angle four, what triangle could this be exterior to? Well, this the first thing that I notice, I'm going to try to draw as best, best I can here without having that thing pop up. Uh, this triangle here, obviously it's not going to be great, but that triangle right there. Okay, that's the first triangle that we look at. at angle four is exterior to that triangle that I kind of just drew around there. So what are the exterior or the interior angles that are the furthest away from that? Angle two and angle five. So we're going to say angle two and angle five are less than angle four. Okay, so that's just one triangle. We might have to look for other triangles. Okay, so now I'm actually going to try to get this to come up on purpose. And I'm going to change to red if I can. Okay, so now let's look at another triangle that we might find. And here's what we've got here is this whole big triangle here. 
<laughs> as best I can do it. All right, so see this whole big triangle now. Angle four is also an exterior angle to that whole big triangle, right? So other angles that will be um, less than angle four, well, this angle seven over here, that's the furthest away in that triangle. So we can say angle seven. Now, one thing that we run into that's a little interesting here, you say, well, well, angle eight, maybe, but is it's not really the whole thing. Well, here's the thing is, the whole angle here, eight and two combined would be less than four. So guess what? Angle eight would also be less than four. So yeah, we can go ahead and say that angle eight will be less than four as well. So there's our answers for this one. We got two, five, seven, and eight. All of those angles are less than angle four. Hopefully you're kind of getting a, a feel for that. All right, let's take a look at another one. All right, this time we're, we're still going to use the, this is actually the same triangle there, but we're going to try to list all the angles whose measures are greater than the measure of angle eight. Okay, so the measure, the angles that are measured greater than angle eight. All right, so let's find eight. So here's eight right here. And so remember, this is kind of the opposite of what we were doing before. The exterior angle has to be bigger. And so now this has to be an interior angle um, since we're trying to find which ones are bigger than that. So this is going to be the smaller one. So again, we have to look through kind of some triangles here and see what angles would be exterior um, to that, that one. So let's start with this triangle right here. This is the first one that I see. Rats. Okay, uh, I've got to work on trying to make that uh, not go away so easily. Um, all right, here's the triangle. All right, so there's there's the triangle, and remember, this angle eight has to be one of the angles that's the furthest away from the exterior angle. So you say, well, if you look at this, you go, oh, well, hey, here's, here's an angle right here. One, well, that's not furthest away from um, eight. Is, it's not, one is not furthest away from eight or vice versa. Um, so let's, let's see what else. Well, if I look around here, I say, well, if I continued this out this way, here's angle five. That's exterior to this triangle where eight is furthest away from five. So five would be one of our one of our angles that's greater than eight. Okay, so eight, five is greater than eight. Okay, what else? Looking at that same triangle, actually you could look a different way. Notice over here to the left, there's also a line that goes out that way. And so look at nine. Angle nine is exterior, and the two angles that are the first furthest away from nine are eight and six. So actually, we could also say that the measure of angle 9 would be greater than 8. Are we following that? So again, 8 and 6 are the furthest away from 9, and 8 is one of those. And 8 and 7 are furthest away from 5, and 8 is one of those. So 5 and 9 both would be um, greater than 8. Now, one other thing, a little bit of a tricky thing on this one, is this. Um, because, you know, if we look at the big triangle here, um, in a sense, uh, that doesn't help us much because of the, because eight and two together here. But there is one other thing that we, that we kind of can do as a little bit of an extension. Um, since we said that five was bigger than eight, and then if you turned around and you looked at five as an interior angle, now you look at that as being interior in, uh, let me see, I'm going to change the color again here. Um, change it back to blue. So now, so now, if you think about that angle five as being interior in this triangle, ah. okay. Try it again. See if I leave the pen down too long, it wants to go to the next. Uh, slide. All right, so then that uh, that angle, that triangle right there, if you think of that one, now five is interior and it's one of and it's one of the two that's furthest away from four. And so five is smaller than four. So five is smaller than four. 
then four has to be bigger than eight as well. So kind of by extension there, we could also say the measure of angle four. So five is bigger than eight, nine is bigger than eight, and also four is bigger than eight. And the reason four is bigger than eight is because four is bigger than five and five is bigger than eight. Okay, that kind of make a little bit of a sense there. All right, next, which you've seen this about three times already. So, um, all right. So this is dealing with sides and angles inside the triangle. And, and again, this kind of relates to something that we've done before. Uh, remember how we were just talking about isosceles triangles? And if the two sides that were the same um, in an isosceles triangle, you, you look at the angles that were directly across uh, from those would be the same as well. Well, that's kind of the same thing that's happening here. Basically, they're saying, if you have a triangle, and uh, you look at the two sides here, nine and seven, well, the, the angle that's straight across from it will kind of correspond to how long these are. So for example, before when these were the same, the angles were the same. Well, now if nine is bigger, it's longer, that means angle Z will be greater than angle X. So if you have a longer side, the angle across from it's going to be bigger. If you have a smaller side, the angle across from it is going, going to be smaller. Okay, so it kind of makes sense. You think, you know, if you, the longer line you have, uh, the bigger the angle is going to be uh, on that. So, and then this is, and then 5.10 here, the other part is just the opposite of that. If you have this angle as being 110 and it's bigger than 45, well, what side is going to be longer? straight across from 110, that side, or KL, here, will be greater than J, JL. Okay, so you see, kind of see how that plays out there? I, I don't think that one's too bad. Let's take a look at a few examples now. Okay, so here's a triangle, um, and some sides are listed. So we want to write the angles in order from smallest to largest. Okay, smallest to largest. Okay, so smallest to largest. All right, so if we want the smallest angle first, well, let's look for the smallest side. Well, what's the smallest side? That's the smallest side. So if that's the smallest side, what's the smallest angle going to be? Straight across from that would be angle C. So we're going to say angle C would come first. All right, next biggest side would be 14.3. Okay, so what's the angle across from that? A. So next would come angle A. And then what's the longest side? 15.7, so straight across from that would be angle B. And so that would be order from in order from smallest to largest, C, A, B. Okay, not too bad, right? Let's take a look at one more. All right, so same thing, kind of we got the sides and we're gonna try to figure it out. Maybe you can figure it out before I, before I um, before I go over it here. So again, if we're going from smallest to largest, if we're going smallest angle first means we want to find the smallest side, okay? Which one's the smallest side? 17.4 is the smallest side. So what's the smallest angle? Straight across from that, which is angle X. All right, next. Next biggest, 18.5. So straight across from that means angle T would be the next biggest, and then the, the largest side would be 20.2, and so straight across from that would be angle B. There you go. Okay. So X, T, and then B. Sorry I have to be so sloppy there, but every time I leave the pen down too long, it goes to the next slide. All right, good. Are we getting that? Feel okay? All right, now, what about if we know the angles and we want to try to list the sides from shortest to longest? Okay, it's just exactly the same thing, but just kind of reverse it. Look at the angles first. So if we want the shortest side, we have to find the smallest angle. And so if I look here, I go, hey, smallest angle is 45. So what's the shortest side would be the side straight across from that, which would be AC. Okay, what's the next 
largest angle would be 55. The side straight across from that would be line AB. And finally, the biggest angle would be 80. Straight across from that would be BC. So that would be that would be uh, the order from shortest side to longest side. Okay, one more, and then then something fun at the end. All right, same kind of thing. List the sides in order from shortest to longest. Okay, so again, see if you can't maybe work ahead of me here on this one. So if we want to go from shortest. to longest all right look for the smallest angle first okay so we go hey smallest angle is 43 so the side across from that would be side rs okay that's the shortest side next uh, angle would be 64 and so across from that would be side rt and finally, the biggest angle, 73, would be straight across from that, or ST. Okay? Pretty easy, right? Okay, good. All right. Last one. Let's, oh, oh, whoa. Wait a minute. How can I do that? Look at all this stuff in here. It doesn't, okay, remember before what we did? when we had to find out what the angles were. So we're just, all we're doing here is we're gonna go back and do a, a few things that we did before to figure out what the angles are, and that way we can uh, tell the angles in the sides. Okay, so remember in a triangle, what's the key thing about the uh, degrees in a triangle? We need, we know that the triangle has to have 180 degrees, right? Okay, so we know that it has to be 180 degrees, and remember this little symbol here means this is a right angle or 90 degrees. And so what we say is, remember, if we know the whole thing is 180, we can say uh, 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 9 plus 90 equals 180. Now, you could probably skip a step there, maybe, if you wanted to. Uh, and knowing that this was 90, you could just say, hey, 2x plus 1 plus 2x plus 9 would have to equal 90, because then that 90 plus this 90 would be 180. That's fine. Uh, that's totally fine if you want to do that. But let's go ahead and just solve this then. 2x and 2x is 4x. And then I've got 90 plus 9 is 99 plus 1 is 100. So this is really 4x plus 100 equals 180. And then subtract 100. 4x equals 80, divide by 4, and so x would equal 20. Okay, so great, now we know what x is. All we have to do now is plug in 20 uh, to find the other measures. And so let's plug in uh, 20 up here for 2x plus 1, so that's going to be 2 times 20 plus 1. Yeah, so 2 times 20 is 40 plus 1 is 41. And again, this was measure, uh, that was angle X, measure of angle X. Sorry about that. Um, and then the other one is uh, 2 times 20 plus 9, which would be 49. And that was the measure of angle Y. All right, so then I'll, so is what it's asking you for us to do is list the angles and sides in order from smallest to largest. So let's start with the uh, angles. So the angles, the smallest angle would be uh, 41. So angle X would come first, and then 49, or angle Y, and then finally would be angle Z. Okay, so that would be the angles in order uh, and again I'm gonna write I'm gonna write this in here to help us with the sides so that's 49 and this is 41 and so then for the sides we just say okay uh, smallest side would be uh, look at 41 and you go the side across from that is ZY 
And then 49 would come next. And so across from that would be this side over here, which is XZ. And then finally, 90 degrees straight across from that would be XY. And so that would be the sides in order from smallest to largest. So there you go. Um, hopefully that's not too too difficult for you today. Uh, appreciate you being here. And, um, and uh, next time we do one of these, hope to see you there. Bye.